it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm here with another video to share my thoughts and um, insight about the upcoming new moon. And that is taking place on the 1st of December for most of us in the world. And it is when the sun and the moon both meet at nine degrees, 32 minutes of Sagittarius. Now, this is a really magical way to start off, to kick off the month of December, which is particularly um, special because we are working with really strong Sagittarian energy. So um, just as a reminder, um, if you're new to astrology or, you know, just for a reminder for us all, really, that when we are working with new moon energy, we are marking the start of the lunar cycle. So this is the point where the sun and the moon are together. So there is no light um, available for from the sun to illuminate the moon. So it's effectively like um, a period of darkness. But I particularly love working with the new moon energy because it is from this darkness that something new can be created. The seed can germinate, something can be birthed and brought into our reality. So, you know, each month, um, every 28 days, we have a new moon and that really gives us an opportunity to explore the energies of the sign that the new moon falls within. So with these videos, um, I try and bring through possibly a slightly different perspective. We'll explore the energies of Sagittarius for sure. I also will bring in some of the galactic and fixed star energies as a galactic as a galactic astrologer, just to again highlight how we have this sort of assistance and support and influence and input from sort of energies that are beyond our solar system. So, you know, taking us out into the galactic field and um, really very much to elevate our um, awareness and our consciousness and the energies that we are working with. So, um, the new moon is taking place in the UK at 6.24 a.m. So just obviously it will be different depending on where you are in the world. And what is special with this one, as well as the fact that it's on the 1st of December and it's sort of welcoming in the 12th month, the final month of 2024, is that this is the second new moon in a row of con six consecutive new moons all taking place at nine degrees of their sign so this is the second one we will have a further four after um the new moon in sagittarius and then following new moon in capricorn actually falls within december as well so again december is a really special month because we have three lunations to work with so when we are thinking about sagittarius this is the ninth sign of the zodiac it is when you're looking at the wheel it lies to the top right hand side of the chart so we'd say probably around about one o'clock if you were thinking of it in terms of a clock face um sagittarius energy is um well the ruling planet is jupiter so instantly you know we are we're working with a very benefic very positive um very abundant energy sagittarius really is helping us to fly to lift out of perhaps um the more sort of mundane physical experience and to be able to rise up so that we get a completely different perspective with Sagittarius you can really start to see the bigger picture of what is going on it is very um lucky very fortunate very optimistic very inspiring energy to have in the chart and it's also very closely linked to freedom so again you know with Sagittarius we almost free ourselves from the physical realm and we move up into a more spiritual expression so with Sagittarius you know this can rule um philosophy religion spirituality it's very much linked to exploration and to taking us beyond our sort of day-to-day -day immediate environment so that we can explore what may appear or what may be foreign to us, but taking us beyond to foreign lands to explore foreign countries cultures and to connect with something that is different to what we have perhaps grown up with or always been used to. So, you know, we're working with basically what is being seeded at the time of this new moon is very linked to the Sagittarian themes. So coming 
bringing us into a much um, bigger picture perspective, perhaps being able to see something from a different viewpoint that we weren't able to see before, um, giving us also um, an opportunity to really review our belief systems or perhaps bring in and introduce and give birth to a new belief system. Sagittarius is also about faith. So again, you know, we are being given this opportunity to rise up, to fly high and to harness greater amounts of faith, which will see us through, particularly these very challenging times that we find ourselves in. So this is mutable energy. Sagittarius is mutable fire. So, you know, again, there is like to be a lot of change. You certainly can't get stuck into one set way when you're working with strong Sagittarian energy. And, you know, it is also also bringing in a lot more light, a lot more space so that we can feel more lighthearted, so that we can feel more expanded in our beliefs and in our general approach to life. So this is a really optimistic, joyful, fun, abundant energy to be ending the year with. It brings in hope for the future. Um, again, you know, and this is what we're seeding, what we're bringing in is filling us with hope that something new can come, that we can sort of dream something, you know, expansive and almost beyond our wildest dreams, that we can bring that into being and almost manifest it through this new moon energy. And the other theme that comes through really strongly with Sagittarius is truth. And I will talk about some of the galactic energies that back this up. But, you know, this is really a time for truths to be brought to light, for truth to be born. And, you know, and I say this regularly, this is not always about those external truths, all about the disclosure and the exposure that so many of us are sort of desperately trying to bring in. This is about the truth of who we are and our inner truth, the truth of how powerful we are as well. So we're, we're going to be experiencing a lot of great growth and a lot of elevation and a lot of expansion as this new moon comes into play and wherever it is lying or falling in your chart that is the area of life where you can expect to experience the most growth the most elevation and the most expansion now I'm going to show you the chart. OK, so as you can see, this is the new moon chart. We've got um, sun and moon at nine degrees, 32 minutes of Sagittarius. We've also got Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius, although this isn't really close enough to be considered a conjunction, but it is kind of strengthening that fire energy. And if you look at elsewhere in the chart, you will see we have the North Node. We've got quite a lot of Aries energy. So the um, the first fire sign of the three, but the North Node in particular is close enough to be considered a trine to the moon and the sun. And then over here in the other side of the chart, we have Mars at five degrees of Leo. So this is creating this beautiful grand fire trine. And when I was sort of tuning into the energies and looking at the chart, this is one of the features that really stood out to me. When we're working with the grand trine, there is a beautiful flow between the three um, signs that all share the same elements. So Leo, Sagittarius and Aries, all fire signs sharing the common ground of fire. When we're working with strong fire, you know, this is really purifying. For me, whenever I think of fire, I think of the phoenix, also dragon energy. You know, this is highly purifying, highly transmutative, transmuting the lower energies, the lower frequencies so that we can give birth to something new, very like the phoenix, something coming up from the ashes once all the old has been burnt away. Obviously, there is strong combustion here and the potential for the flames almost to get out of control like a wildfire. So certainly we need to be mindful of that. But it is about getting that balance right between having the right amount of fire to really energise us, to give us passion, to make us feel bold and give us enough courage in a in order to be able to initiate something and take action and really bring this this new um, reality and this new way of thinking and this new spiritual approach into being. And of course, you know, because we've got um, Mars here 
in Leo, this is about connecting to the heart energy. It's about harnessing all that courage that absolutely we need to be able to move forward. But knowing that if we do it from the heart and that everything we do is heart centered, then it has much more of a chance of coming into being and also lasting you know, because that's important too. We also have the North Node in Aries. So this is about our future soul evolution, our soul growth, where we are going. This is pioneering energy. This is leadership energy. This is taking us into realms and ways of being and realities that perhaps we haven't experienced before. And, you know, with the sun and the moon here as well, sort of giving that light and that solar energy, that lunar energy to really propel us into new ways of being. So that is a really, really strong aspect to have in a new moon chart. Um, the other thing that I really sort of struck me when I was thinking about this grand fire trine, trine is this image of the ring of fire with the so with the triangle in it and I asked um, chat GBT to create the image for me and I'll show you, show you what came up. So you know, this is the kind of visual I was getting. I, I, to be fair, you know, I kind of saw the um, triangle obviously touching, connecting with the planets. But, um, you know, the ring of fire for me and I, um, you know, I was really tuning into this is very transmutative, very purifying, also very protective, sort of this ring of fire, making sure that anything that is not of the sort of the highest truth and the highest frequency will literally be burnt away. It cannot penetrate that central energy, that core energy. It also is amplifying the energy to a much higher level than perhaps we've ever experienced before and sort of giving, bringing a really high level of intensity to what it is that we are bringing in, what it is that we are seeding and birthing. So deep transformation coming through this ring of fire, this grand trine of fire, also the symbol obviously of eternity, of unity, of, continu of continuation, and the fact that you know, as souls, we are eternal and also helping us to really harness that faith in a greater, a higher and a bigger plan to have that higher perspective and and the um, and these beautiful frequencies coming through. So if we just look at some of the other points in this chart that are standing out to me, I won't look at all of them. But um, in particular, I am really drawn to this opposition between Chiron at 19 degrees of Aries and this asteroid over here at 20 degrees of Libra, which is, oops, asteroid Atlantis. Now, this is really um, quite poignant and pertinent for me because I have been working a lot with the energies and memories of Atlantis, as have I know a lot of people um, who are aware of having soul connections to this ancient earthly civilization. But the fact that this asteroid in Libra is opposing Chiron just speaks to me of this beautiful opportunity as we do raise our consciousness, as we do start to see a bigger bigger picture and are able to elevate ourselves and lift, lift ourselves out of where perhaps we might have felt stuck or held back. The fact that we've got this opposition really speaks to me of great healing coming through through now as we start to really explore um, the potential of bringing peace and a really strong um, signature of peace to our connections with Atlantis, those past life wounds, that past life karma that so many of us have come in to work through to transmute and to heal. This is a real opportunity at the time of this new moon. And in fact, now, even as I record this video, this is very much ongoing, but bringing a sense of balance, a sense of justice as well. And perhaps where things, you know, where we felt there was an abuse of power and things got out of control, this is an opportunity to really bring um, the energies back into alignment, back into balance and really connect to an inner sense of peace that so many of us haven't necessarily been able to access because there was so much trauma and so many wounds that really needed to be seen, needed to be felt and needed to be worked through. So this is a really beautiful time to work through that healing energy. And also the fact that um, we've got this trine with Mercury in retrograde trining 
Chiron in Aries and sextile as the asteroid Atlantis. You know, again, this is kind of giving just a new perspective, a deeper level of wisdom and knowledge coming through that can help us achieve this healing and work that we are all really being called to do because there is this sense that for so many of us, you know, we won't be able to move forward and elevate ourselves and ascend until we have managed to clear all those energies and traumas and memories and wounds that are holding us back. And this really is the lifetime that we are here to do that. So we've got the support from Chiron. We've also got the trine up here with Jupiter in Gemini. Again, you know, trining Atlantis, sextile Chiron, and opposing Mercury. So that is really beautiful. And that is expanding in its highest expression. It's really expanding this understanding and maybe getting even about getting our facts straight and getting a sort of new access to new facts and new understandings that perhaps just weren't um, available before. And as we start to understand more, that helps us to shift the perspective, which really is what the Sagittarius new moon is also supporting us to do. So really, really beautiful um, opportunity here to heal those wounds in order to help us fly. And of course, you know, as well, I mean, this, this is kind of almost like speaking to all the, um, to, this is speaking to so many parts of the chart, but with Venus at 23 degrees of Capricorn, we have got this square to Atlantis. So again, you know, this is almost harnessing this new sense of self-worth, connecting to talents and skills that perhaps we may have disconnected from that, that have roots um, for in Atlantis and in, in Atlantean lifetimes. But also acknowledging through the um, signature of Capricorn that, you know, this has been a long time coming. Capricorn can really take um, such a long time to really when we're working with Capricorn, there is this nod that things take time, that, you know, you have to have that determination, that perseverance, that resilience. You know, this is a long, hard slog, but it really does feel, you know, that that long, hard slog and all that determination and resilience is about to pay off. So that that I really see that as a really, really important part of this chart. And the other asteroid um, that I wanted to draw attention to is this one, which is Hecate. Now, this is the goddess of witchcraft, and she is in direct opposition to Eris in Aries, the goddess of chaos and discord and strife. So again, you know, I've been talking about the witch wound a lot recently. I um, I know a lot of people will have watched the video I did about Pluto and Aquarius and my feelings that with the Aquarian energy and this transformative um, dwarf planet Pluto moving through Aquarius, this is about all of those people who have felt marginalized, who have felt cast out, who have, you know, been sitting on the fringe, on the edge and not been able to fully sort of um, come into society because they are seen as different. They are seen as the mavericks, the rule breakers and the unconventional ones. This is a real time um, for that to start to break down and to be healed so that we can become much more cohesive. And the fact that Hecate in Libra, again, it's about bringing balance, it's about bringing peace, it's also about bring, bringing justice as well through all these um, beautiful witchy energies. And, you know, finally, all those who've been marginalised and who have perhaps, you know, been on the on the edges are finally been given a voice. They're finally stepping into their power and stepping into all of who they are with Eris in Aries. So again, that's a really, really beautiful aspect to have in this chart. Um, we've also got, again, um, very much sort of underworld um, energy coming through here with Orcus, 17 degrees of Virgo in an exact square to Jupiter at 17 degrees of Gemini. So, you know, Orcus is one of the gods of the underworld. He was very much in charge of making sure that those who had done wrong paid the price. So this is very much about um, justice. 
and making sure that people pay the consequences of their actions. So the fact that Jupiter is in a square, again, you know, we may see more justice coming to light, more people being forced to sort of atone for their behaviour, for their actions, for and the choices that they have made. And again, this is through information that is coming to light through Jupiter in Gemini. And again, it's interesting, I talked about Jupiter and its higher expression in the lower expression in Gemini, this is potentially going to almost increase the need to, um, or the increase the case and um, the experience of people being, um, coming to choose sides, having to almost almost splitting society up even more because obviously Jupiter expands the energy. So, you know, again, just be mindful of, of that. Um, but in its higher expression it is about um, sort of almost transcending that. And the fact that we've got this Sagittarian new moon is that is also lending the support to transcend the duality, to transcend the separation and the division that is such a big part of our society and our world in these times. So that was just something really interesting to note. But I am going to um actually before just one last thing we also have um Saturn at 12 degrees of Pisces is in a square to the sun and the moon so you know Saturn is now direct motion this is really just almost like giving us a pause now the exact square or the square will be exact for the sun um a couple of days after the new moon but almost we still have the energy here and Saturn is almost saying right just stop you know it's great that you've got all these ideas you've kind of starting to see this bigger picture you're trying to elevate you're trying to expand but just make sure almost this is like the father figure Saturn just saying hang on a minute just make sure that whatever it is that you are bringing in is aligned with a more spiritual way forward because this is what Saturn is trying to do as he moves through Pisces to helping us to master our spiritual sides helping us to connect with our higher selves in a much more um, grounded, mature and structured way, um, if that makes sense. So, you know, again, it's an interesting, squares can often be challenges, but I feel here it isn't necessarily a challenge. It isn't as tense as perhaps it could be in other cases. It is more a, just a check in, make it, it's a reality check effectively, making sure that whatever it is that we are seeding or what you are seeding at a personal level, that you have actually sort of thought of the consequences from a much more spiritual perspective. And it also, um, because Saturn in Pisces is very karmic, it's almost reminding us as well that, you know, as we move through all these big shifts and these big changes, that there is a lot of karma being dissolved and being worked through and being cleared and transmuted. So again, this is a reminder Saturn is just saying, actually, you know, it might be wise just to acknowledge that as well, because that is part of this process that we are going through. So I just want to talk about some of the um, galactic fixed star energies. I'm not going to go through the entire chart. There are quite a few fixed stars um, sort of working with this new moon. But the um, there's just a couple that I want to really highlight in for the, for the purpose of this video. And um, that is in the main linked to the sun and the moon because both sun and the moon are conjunct fixed star Antares. Now Antares is in the Scorpius constellation but it is um, shares a degree in Sagittarius. Let me just check which one that is or where it is exactly at this time. So Antares at this time is at 10 degrees and about six minutes of Sagittarius. So it's very, very close to the sun and the moon. And this is one of the royal stars. So this is really high frequency fixed star energy really being activated at this time as we start to bring in the new. So Antares is lending this beautiful fixed star um, support for whatever it is that we are wanting to create. Now, Antares is the watcher in the West. There are four royal stars in our skies. And this star is very linked to Archangel Uriel. So this is really strong archangelic energy, really high frequency, very creative 
and and also very linked to spiritual awakening. Now, what's really interesting is that Archangel Uriel is the angel of wisdom, truth, and light. So again, we're seeing this sort of replication, the themes of wisdom, of higher knowledge, higher understanding, spirituality, and truth being that kind of core and um, repeating theme going through all of the chart. Um, Uriel and the energy of Antares really helps to shine a light in the dark. So again, you know, we're in this new moon, we're in the dark phase, there might, it might not feel as if there is a lot of light, but there is acknowledgement that often we need the darkness to be able to create something from scratch or something new and to bring it into being, but that there is this beautiful light and lighting the way and showing us the path. Now, um, Uriel has sometimes been described as the fire of God, and certainly this is a messenger of God. So again, we've got this sort of higher consciousness, almost this Christ consciousness coming through, giving us faith, giving us clarity, helping us to see the bigger picture. And what I also love um, about Antares, it is said to be one of the centers where souls go to really support their spiritual awakening. It acts as a stargate or portal. So it is like a crossing point for very high frequency souls to come through and to come into the lower realm. So again, you know, many of us high frequency starseed souls are likely to have traveled through Antares at other times in our soul journey. This star really helps us to become much more into the self, to really awaken to our own power, to claim our power, our inner power, and to really harness much more light. So it's really beautiful to have this star working with the new moon, helping us to release old versions of the self that we've simply outgrown and to really ultimately increase the vibration and increase the frequency, which seems to be so such um, a really potent part of the energies at this time, particularly with the Sagittarian frequency. Now, in opposition to Antares, we have Aldebaran, which is a um, another of the royal stars. This is the Watcher in the East, and this is the star linked to Archangel Michael. So with the opposition, it is as if we have the energy of Aldebaran almost being projected towards us, something to reach out and harness, to draw in, but also almost like a guiding light. Now, um, Aldebaran is a very protective energy. It's very linked to truth and to justice. There's a strong link to the Blu-ray here. And I'll talk about another Blu-ray star in a minute. But themes of power, of faith, of courage, of protection, of strength, and of enlightenment, but also very much truth and justice, which you know, we've talked about a very strong Sagittarian theme. So again, you know, we've got this really, really powerful royal star, archangelic um, frequencies coming through and playing such a big part in this new moon. Now, the um, if we look at Mercury in Sagittarius, Mercury is an in an almost exact opposition with Nihal, which is in the Lepus constellation. Now, Nihal um, is one of the stars that we associate with the Blu-ray frequency. So we've got the Blu-ray coming through Aldebaran, we've got the Blu-ray coming through Nihal, you know, and this is really beautiful. This is really deep transmutation energies, clearing the old, sort of pulling back anything that we have outgrown. Um, also very linked to um, magic, to um, and to the magician um, with Merlin energy is very strong with Nihal and the ability to manifest something, to bring it into being, to connect with your inner power. And, you know, also acknowledging a really um, high level of sensitivity coming through as well. So that's in, a, in opposition to Mercury, really influencing um, our learning our understanding and our mind so really beautiful energy there we've also got with mercury bellatrix in the orion constellation is also in opposition and she is for me the female warrior that divine feminine warrior very linked to witchcraft as well i always think of um, bellatrix in the harry potter um, movies but again 
you know, stepping into that inner power, claiming sovereignty, you know, very like sort of that heiress signature and Hecate, you know, lots of themes of witchcraft, but also sort of harnessing um, the the power that perhaps we have felt cut off from or that we felt that we might have lost or that has been um, repressed within us either externally or something that we've done ourselves. You know, this is coming online now. And obviously the strong fire in the chart is helping us to reignite that inner flame, that inner spark and really start to let things burn. And, you know, I can kind of feel like the dragon fire rising and that real roar that needs to come out. And, um, we have got um, Jupiter is conjunct almost exactly Rigel or Rigel in the Orion constellation. So again, we've got our Orion energies coming through, helping us to expand our awareness, our understanding. And um, this star is very linked to um, having a more strategic approach, sort of um, very sort of leadership qualities, being able to push forward through the confusion. And there's plenty of confusion for sure at the moment with Neptune and Saturn in Pisces. But Jupiter in um, conjunct Regal really helps us to navigate and find a way through that. And also Regal is very instrumental in helping us to really um, work to expose the dark agendas, to expose the manipulation and the, and the interference and to harness the um, a much stronger connection with the Orion light, which is effectively the Christ consciousness signature in the Orion constellation but where the point at which we sort of move beyond the duality and the separation that is perhaps, you know, being really enhanced and lit up at this time, but we're able to, I guess, through being able to see it for what it is and feel it so strongly, we choose another way and we can move beyond that. And again, this is where sort of the, the polarity um, working with the Sagittarius and the Gemini energy, and we will be working with a Gemini full moon in the middle of December. This is about moving beyond the separation and the duality and coming into a much more unified position where we can see the bigger picture and where we can see that ultimately we are all connected. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, it is kind of a snapshot, but those are the energies that are standing out most for me. So um, I hope you have enjoyed my um, insights, sort of putting out some of the key themes for this new moon. It's worth looking at where it's going to fall in your chart. For me, it's my third house and it's conjunct my natal Neptune. Um, Antares, I have with nat um, conjunct natal Neptune. So, you know, this feels like a big time for me in terms of my understanding and my expression. And certainly I'm looking at lots of different ways which I can bring my knowledge to, to you in sort of different ways from now and um, from previously. So obviously I'll be continuing my YouTube channel, but I also want to start looking at perhaps um, recording some meditations, doing some online courses and basically sharing my um, yeah my knowledge with you on a, a wider scale. So um, I hope, you know, if you follow me, that that is something that you are potentially going to be interested in. Absolutely watch this space. My newsletter will come out at the weekend or being well. So if you're not on my mailing list, please sign up for that on my website. And, you know, if you want to work with me, if you're interested in looking at your own galactic connections or how this new moon or other new moons and full moons are going to be sort of affecting you at a personal level i do offer readings so please feel free to reach out and um yeah let's explore how we can work together but like i say lots of stuff in the pipeline sort of moving into 2025 it feels like you know obviously there's going to be a lot going on but it feels um yeah like there's just so much potential but this is a really creative energy and this is a really very spiritual new moon to help us rise to literally um you know take it find our wings and start to fly because really it feels like it's time for that to happen so thank you so much for being with me for walking on this path with me and i will see you soon